everyone! Welcome back to another multiplayer battle for Warhammer. Uh, this is going to be some Beastmen and uh, Vampire Counts duking it out. This is what I would call a fun fight. Uh, this is not an army that I would say, Hey, maybe you should bring this in your battles. It's just, hey, you know what? I, I felt the need for some cows, so I got some cows. So my army, we got some cows. We got some cows in different varieties. We have some cows wielding uh, double axes. We have some cows with an axe and shield with these renowned units of the Butchers of Kalkigar, which have regeneration. Also, they look more cow-like. We got a couple cows that have just giant axes that are following their cow god called the Gorbel. So we got uh, two of the, the cows with giant axes with the Gorbel. And they're being led by someone who's not a cow because there isn't really a cow lord out there, which is a shame. But... Instead, we have Malagor of the Dark Omen variety. The spells I brought are Devolve, which is an AoE damage. We have Bray Scream, which is an AoE damage. And we have Vile Tide, which is an AoE damage. On top of that, he does have the Icons of Vilification and granting leadership to all allies around him, which is going to be very helpful to these uh, cows that are kind of moving across the battlefield with him. We have Bestial Surge, which is going to increase their Vigor and Charge bonus as long as he's casting spells. And then we also have the Unholy Power, which is just a constant improvement rate on the um, spell casting that he can do. Then also, something wicked this way comes, which will also get some value in this fight because it has an AoE of minus 4 leadership. Although against the Vampire Counts, it's not going to break them, obviously, but it could get them closer to uh, breaking down when their leadership is broken. So there we go. We got some cows. We got more cows. We got a Gorbel cow. You know, he's a Gorbel. Uh, for the Vampire Counts, though, they have an actual army. They have four Graveguard and the Konigstein Stalkers up in the middle, which are the poison... Um, renowned unit for the skeletons, and they have more armor than a normal skeleton unit, so that's their front line. The midline is made up of multiple graveguard with great weapons. They have three of them, I believe. Four of them. They have four graveguard with great weapons, and then they also have these sternsmen. So we got five normal graveguard, including the renowned, four graveguard with great weapons, and a skeleton unit, along with two of the white kings, and their leader is going to be the blood dragon vampire lord. Uh, the blood dragon vampire lord is a pretty good duelist overall, and has a bonus versus infantry. I want you to pause this for a moment because these skeletons are getting away. So he has Heart Piercer, which is going to increase his damage and imbue them with Sunder Armor. Helm of Discord is just such a great AoE debuff. The Undeath Resurgent is a pretty okay melee defense buff and leadership for the forces around him. Also has the Sword of Anti-Heroes, which buffs up his damage even more. We got Raise Dead, we have Van Heels, Dance Macabre, and the Invocation of Nahek. On top of that, we have the Unique Lord Ability, Honor, or Death, which increases leadership and damage resistance of everyone around him, and that is active if he is in melee. He has the Hunger because because he is a vampire, so on and so forth. He also has uh, Rampage ability. Okay, and that's their lord. So we got an actual army of just... It's actually kind of weird. We have an army of basically just grave guards versus an army of basically just cows. I just kind of realized that. Anyway, this is going to be a little different because, listen, there's not much to really say in this battle. What I will say is that the uh, Gorbel and the Grave... or Sorry, Minotaurs are great weapons. I'm going to try and focus them to go on the White Kings as much as possible and their Blood Dragon Lord. And that's basically it. Everyone else is going to be just getting into a melee brawl. We're going to be summoning a bunch of spells to give us the uh, passive and try and do a lot of damage to the uh, vampire counts. So I'm just going to let this be... Actually, hold on. I'm just going to let this be a cinematic view from the very beginning because there's not much talking. You know me, I love talking. But in a fight where it's just a bunch of melee people versus melee people, it's just going to devolve into a giant melee brawl with not much in the way of tactics i'll just say that except for just spell casting so you know what let's just sit back relax and watch some cows move over some undead faces so speaking of the one few tactics i used the strategy was trying to destroy the undead leadership here which is why the gorbel and all of his giant cows with great axes are on him over here we're going to be casting a whole bunch of aoe spells on these grave guard which it would have been better if they were skeletons because grave guard have you know more durability but it's fine this is going to be a long fight. Long fight. Moo! Moo! Uh, Malagor is going to be buried in the center of our formation by the Butchers of Calcum Guard over here. He's just going to be duking it out with a bunch of Grave Guard. One of our Minotaurs has routed at this point. They will come back from routing, and I'm going to run them into the forest and run them around these Grave Guard and pull them back into the fight. Again, there's not much in the way of maneuvering here. We have just dealt with one of the Vikings, so the Gorbel and his best buds are going over here to support Malagor over there. Being chased by a bunch of Grave Guards. Here goes the Blood Dragon Lord fighting our second group of Great Axe Minotaurs. They have taken a heavy beating. Just 
kind of show you the hit points at this point. The spells look impressive because they hit a lot of people, but there's going to be implications of the hex being cast. Remember, there is the AoE damage resistance that the Blood Dragon Lord gives to basically almost like all these units around here as he's in melee. But he's buried over in the middle of all these units for us right now. Along with his White King pal. I believe, yeah. So we got the Gorbel on him. We got the what is left of our Minotaur's great weapons. Just trying to bring down their large units, which is just the White Kings and the Blood Dragon Lord. Blood Dragon Lord is anti-infantry as, as well as the White Kings, so this is kind of a good matchup for our Minotaurs there. Malagor is just going to be kind of duking it out next to these Butchers of Calcagar for the whole battle. For the most part. He's still over here somewhere. There he is. You can kind of see his wings behind the Minotaur. No! That cow is moved its last. So you can kind of see here, we have basically just formed a circle in the center and are surrounded by Graveguard. Not necessarily the best position, but it is a position. Listen, Cal's not that intelligent. is now no one's in there because we've just killed so many graveguard at this point and skeletons so that is the current um hit points of everybody remaining we have destroyed one of the white kings i think at this point and we have also destroyed the blood dragon lord in that duel that i showed a little bit earlier because he was fighting the minotaur's great weapons and the gorbel who was just running just havoc on his face uh they still do have one white king i think left available to them over in the forest I think that's the White King. Yeah. So they have one White King at 50% health, and that's the last of their leadership. Malagor is at 50% as well. Our Butchers of Calcagard is still just taking it up in the center here and doing their best. Gorbul is still sitting uh, at pretty high health. And because we've taken out a lot of leadership, you can see a lot of these Graveguard are now starting to crumble a little bit. But our numbers are also pretty low. We don't have as many cows left. They have been milked. They have been sent to the Great Cow Farm beyond. Malagor is the obviously the uh, farmer here. This is his cows. We've taken out all of the Conning Sign Stalkers. There goes another AoE spell. So fighting in this formation against a bunch of undead that have Invocation of the Heck is dangerous, but they didn't they weren't able to really cast too many of them because they lost their Blood Lord pretty early on to dueling our Gorbel and the Minotaurs of Great Weapons. That's not where they wanted to fight with the Blood uh, Dragon Lord there. So luckily we weren't really suffering too many Invocation of the Hex, but... They just saw the White King, and this is the health remaining of all of our units. Not that much. We got one of our uh, cows with the great weapons running off, scared, getting out of the pasture. Butcher the Calca Guard, there's only a few of them remaining. Malagor is just surrounded by Grave Guard. Actually, I guess the Common Side Stalkers are still around. There's still a couple of them over there, dealing their poison damage. No! Butchers, no! Well, we still got the Gorbul. We still got Malagor. Malagor's going to be dealing with the army. The Gorbul is taking out the rest of their leadership over here. Gorbul's pretty good at killing a White King. Now it's running. Probably a smart move. But what's that? Did we pop Foe Seeker? What? Oh! <laughs> Get Gord. Foe Sticker gives us that increased speed and vigor, enough to catch up with the White King and do one last charge to finish him off. He's coming back to try and help Malagor, doing the barrel roll, somersault, whatever. Trying to save the farmer from all these invaders on their farm. 
We don't really have many cows left. I think the Gorbul is just all we got left at this point. And Malagor, I think, is routing right now because he is near death. Yeah. He is dangerous to close to death. In fact, no, the farmer has fallen. Repeat, the farmer has fallen. Now all we have is an enraged cow god against the, the remains of these grave guard. They have no leadership. It's just a one on three, one on four. They still have the damn Sternsman because of their regeneration, so they're mostly what's making up the numbers here. Now, right here is an actual tactical strategic maneuver. Um, what I'm doing here is pulling back, not because I'm trying to delay the fight. It's because I noticed that the remaining units, for the most part, are crumbling and debilitating you see here. So I want them to die. There's no reason for me to engage against units that are slowly dying anyway. So that is why I am withdrawing right here. The Sternsmen are going to hold true because they have that regeneration, so they're not going to die. But these Grave Guard are going to slowly crumble to death. So the enemy, I think they knew what I was doing. So that's why they separated these crumbling units away from the rest, I think. So now I'm going to engage against the Sternsmen. And now it's just the Gorbul versus the Sternsmen because these units are going to crumble to their deaths. And yeah, there's the balance of power up there. It is slightly in my favor because we have the Gorbul left. I'm sorry, the Cow God. Now it's just a straight 1v1. Now what I could be doing more is I could be cycle charging with the Gorbul. The Gorbul does have a charge bonus of 72 right now. Uh, well, that's with the Deadly Onslaught as well. But um, that would definitely assist me in taking out these Sternsmen. But I already kind of felt bad for just bringing an army nothing but Minotaurs. So I didn't really want to just run out, charge, run out, charge. But if you are really in the mood to win a game like this, to so make sure it's heavily in your favor even more than it already is, you can just retreat the Gorbul, charge in, do a massive amount of damage, just charge right through, and just keep doing that. Basically use them like Cav in this situation. It's not really super cheap, honestly, but I just kind of wanted to have a final duel between the Gorbul and the remaining Grave Guard, because I didn't think it was going to get to this point. I thought either we were going to dominate or get dominated, but it's actually a pretty close fight at the end here. Take a look at the hit points. You see the Gorbul is taking a lot of hits from these Sternsmen. He is pretty tanky sitting at 100 armor, but the Sternsmen do regenerate, so they are regenerating this damage, and I'm not really utilizing the charge bonus, so it is pretty close. These guys are unbreakable. The Gorbul, in theory, can break. It is possible. turning away from the camera. It's camera shot. But then he loses! Yep, his morale ended up breaking because he was so close to death, and the Grave Guard, the Sternsmen, are actually going to win the day for the Vampire Counts in this particular matchup. So GG to Sevland. That was just a uh, fun match. You can see here we netted 100 kills with Malagor the Dark Omen with all the AoE spells that I brought. Because I knew that with a bunch of Minotaurs, I wasn't going to have a very wide army, so I was like, well, let's bring Malagor, because one, no one ever uses Malagor, because he's honestly one of the weakest heroes, or lords for the uh, Beastmen, not that there are that many of them, but he is one of the weaker choices, but I knew I wanted to bring just a bunch of Minotaurs, and I still wanted a caster, so it's like Malagor kind of fits in that uh, role, so I brought him, and I was like, well, since we're not going to have a very wide army, more than likely the battle is going to rage in just a small circular area, like exactly what happened. So I thought maybe all these AoE spells with Devolve and Bile Tide would prove to be very useful. And hey, he got 113 kills, a lot of that with magic, but he was also in melee through uh, a large portion of that battle as well. The uh, Minotaurs are great weapons, and the Gorbul, though, really led the way in uh, dealing with both White Kings and the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord uh, pretty early on. Well, one White King lived for a while, but they killed one White King like, like that, and then they circled around, got to the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord pretty quickly before they can really utilize all their wins of magic. And, but then, unfortunately, there are just so many Grave Guard that they slowly whittled us down. Butcher the Calcum Guard, 123 kills. Some decent amount of kills on all of our Minotaurs, really. But that was just super close. I wasn't expecting it to be that close. I thought it was either going to just be a swing on their side or a swing on my side. Either or. I had no idea which way it was going to go. But yeah, it was so super close. And... I think an argument can be made that if you do utilize the charge uh, mechanics of the Gorbul there, 
especially with his attack animations, how he just kind of barrels through enemy units like they're nothing, then you you could probably eke out a victory in that situation if I had charged. But you know what? Either way, I'm fine with winning or losing that fight because it was just a fun fight with some Minotaurs versus Graveguard. Very thematic. Uh, very thematic. Many tales have been told about the Minotaur Graveguard Wars of, uh, of uh, whatever years this fantasy storyline takes place in. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, we already did a cinematic view there, and uh, I'll return to our normally our normal multiplayer battles tomorrow with an actual breakdown of the fight and then cinematic view afterward. But for this one, I thought, you know what? There's not much really happening. It's just a melee brawl. It's just a fun... Anyway, I've talked long enough. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Bye!